Welcome to our video about the anatomy of a critical path schedule. This video doesn't necessarily show you how to use Phoenix, but more tells you how Phoenix and the CPM calculation work. Let's first go over the basic elements of a CPM schedule. First, there's the calendar. The calendar can be really any unit of time, hour, day, week, month, you get the idea. Next, there are tasks, also known as an activity. A task is a period of time equal to or greater than one work unit with both a start and a finish date. Then there's the milestone. Milestones are typically used to flag an important event in your schedule. Being a zero duration event, a milestone will either have a start or finish, but not both. And finally, the last basic element required to make a CPM schedule is the relationship. Relationships are what logically tie tasks and milestones together in order to create a workflow that makes sense. Here we have a list of activities, some having four days or work units, and some having three days of duration. But what order do they happen in? You could just put the activities on a calendar and say this one happens here, this one happens here, and so on. But as soon as you do the CPM calculation I'm about to show you, oops, back to the start they all go. Before I explain why this happens, let me take a second to explain the different type of relationships. I've taken our tasks and made relationships between them, creating a network. First kind of relationship is a finish to start relationship. Finish to start is probably the most common type of relationship. This relationship says that activity B can't start until activity A is complete. Next is the start to start relationship. The start to start in this diagram says that activity D can start once activity B has started. Then there's the finish to finish. The finish to finish relationship in the schedule here shows that activity E must finish on or before the finish date for activity C. One last quick thing about relationships before we get into the actual calculation part is lag. Relationships can on occasion have duration. This duration is referred to as lag. The diagram above demonstrates the use of a two day start to start lag. This means that activity B can start two days after activity A starts. Okay, now for the fun part, the CPM calculation. First you do what is called a forward pass. By working from left to right you determine the earliest day an activity can start and finish giving you what are called early dates. Let's do it. Activity A, our first activity, this activity has no predecessor and can start no earlier than day one. Day four will be the early finish. Following through the finish to start relationship, day five is the earliest activity B will be able to start. And day eight is the earliest it can finish. Day nine is the earliest for C, and day 12 would be the early finish. Now let's jump back and take a look at activity D. You'll maybe notice that we have a start to start relationship between B and D. So that means that D can start can't start any earlier than B's early start, which is day five. The early finish for D would be day seven. And finally, activity E will be day eight for an early start and day 10 for an early finish. And that's it for all our early dates. The second step in calculating the critical path is the backward pass. In the example above, we know that the completion date is day 12. Day 12 was the earliest activity C could complete when we did the forward pass. Working backwards from day 12, you figure out the latest day an activity can start and finish without impacting the project completion date, giving you your late dates. So like we said, day 12 is the finish date, so day 12 is the late finish date for activity C. And its late start would be day 9. B would be 8 and 5. Activity A has a late finish of 4 and a light start of 1. If we jump down to activity E, you can see its late finish is 12 and its late start is 10. D is 9 and 7. Okay, now that we've got our early date numbers and our late date numbers, it's time to calculate the float and see what's critical. Here are the early dates we came up with on our forward pass and here are the late dates from the backward pass. Now all we do is subtract the early dates from the late dates and this gives you total float. 
Total float is how many days an activity can slip without impacting the finish date. For example, activity E can finish two, la two days later than shown. While if activity C doesn't finish on time, project completion is affected. Zero float equals critical. If on A we subtract the early from the late, we get zero. Same thing with activity B and same thing with activity C. If we look at D, you'll notice that the early dates and the late dates are different. If we subtract the early dates from the late dates, we get two days of total float. Same with activity E. If we take the early away from the late, we end up with two days. Zero equals critical. So that means activities A, B, and C are our critical path.